wake up today as a uh, GM of a team in the World Series? Uh, it was uh, it was a special night, and I don't know if it was any different for me than any other player, staff member, family member that's here back home. It was uh, it was it was really special, and I don't know. I, I rolled over about six fifteen this morning, to, and uh, I couldn't go back to sleep. Pretty excited, so. We all are. It was, a, it was a special night for the organization. Gotcha. It, um, Eric, a lot, there's going to be a little bit of narrative here that who are these guys? They just kind of crashed the party. But this has been kind of a plan for a while, hasn't it, to, to get to this level if possible? I mean, I'd, I'd like to think so. And I, I think people that have, that have followed baseball will see the, the wins we put up in 18 and what we did last year in 19. Um, and taking Houston to the brink in game five of the DS to this year, you know, going 40 and 20 in the regular season, um, having the best record of the American League, and then having two really great series against two excellent teams. I, I hope we're not too much of a surprise, um, but, it, you know, it's, uh, we've, we've had some success here and I uh, feel like we're where we, where we should be. Just the last question, how much work have you done on Braves and Dodgers and how much work will you have to do on the roster by Tuesday? Uh, not a whole lot of work um, firsthand. We've got this time of year, we have staff that are deployed to following every team very closely uh, and, and we're during the, the, the tail end of the regular season and certainly through the playoffs. So uh, certainly tonight with that series going to game seven, uh, there'll be a lot of us that'll be keeping an eye on that game and uh, watching it and taking it in players and staff alike. But uh, we got a lot of work to do. We have a lot of trust in the people that have been following those clubs much more closely than we have. And we'll get that whole briefing uh, tomorrow, most likely once we get to Texas, I would assume at this point. But um, now we've got some work to do both with the roster and, and learning those clubs. Atlanta, obviously we saw a little bit this year. That certainly helps. It was early, but there is some familiarity there. And, um, the Dodgers, they've been just a very visible team because of how good they've been. So have some some level of familiarity there, but have some work to do. But today, really, to this point, uh, has been to really a recovery day, I would say. And not, not because of the celebration last night, though. No, that probably is a little bit part of it. But the uh, 12 games in 13 days has been a bit of a grind here. Eric, on that end, um since you're going to have two days off within the World Series, which will be more the normal format, how much do you think that alters or changes how you would look at roster um, creation or usage? Yeah, um, it's a good question. You need to make sure we're fresh physically and we're a good place coming out of this this gauntlet of sorts that, that we just endured. But um, yeah, certainly having the off days in there, it's, it's the traditional postseason format uh, and, and the ways you – Think about organizing a pitching staff and your position player group. It is a little bit different. The considerations go back to something that we're more accustomed to. Um, but those are really all questions. We'll probably we'll start getting into tonight, and we'll we'll take up in earnest tomorrow. And beyond obviously the accomplishment, what are you proudest about regarding this group and the way they've handled their business this year? Um, probably just that. I mean, this is just. Uh, as good a group of people as as you're going to find, um, certainly at the highest level, and as ego free, as selfless um, as as you'll see. And I think it just the to to prevail the way they did. I know we wouldn't have thought anything differently of them. You know, if Game Five of the DS didn't go our way, or Game Seven last night didn't go our way, I, I know we would have thought the same about this entire group. And and just how special they are. But to be on the right side of those wins only, I think, cements it to so many more people. And now they get to show off their, their true qualities and attributes a little bit longer on a bigger stage. And uh, just, just really happy for them to have that moment. Hey, Eric, a lot was made about Cash's pitching decisions in game six and seven. AJ hey, Dillon, the ball carrier. Beyond the analytics that go into those decisions, could you just talk about the culture of fearlessness in this organization to not worry about the outside chatter and to always do what you guys think is right? Yeah, um, I, I think it's in everything that we do. You know, the, the decisions made during the game, that's, that's on Kevin and the staff to – you know, to make those, um, 
when, once the games are underway, I'm, I'm a spectator. <laughs> yeah, we all are um, outside of that, outside that dugout, but um, have all the confidence in the world that he and the group are going to make the decision that they feel is best to win the game and, and, and for the team. And I think that's something that without much regard for whether or not there will be second guessing, whether you open yourself up to some of those risks, the, the concerns of what could go wrong, um, I, I think just a very process oriented group that is, um, you know, they're going to do what they think is best. And if it works great, that's why we're doing what we think is best. And if it doesn't, and it comes with some chatter and some second guessing, so be it. You know, I think some of that was seen, um, you know, in, in, in Blake's outing, it certainly seemed like, and I, and I think just for all of us, I, I, it's not, not trying to outsmart anybody, not trying to do anything other than just trying to do the best we can to make the decisions we believe are best for us in all facets of our operation. And if they're second best, that's okay. Um, you know, these opportunities to, you know, we get to work in a game, you know, and, and, and we get to make a living out of this and um, we don't take that for granted. And uh, just being in that situation, you want to, you want to do the things that you think are, are right and what you think is best and to put your best foot forward and, Proud that we're able to do that without much concern about how it'll be perceived or judged by others. Is that attitude sort of encouraged by Stu from the very top? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's this, yeah, I think on some level is there's support to do what we think is best and not what will be second guessed the least, you know, in anything that we do. And, there, and, and I've, I've been here, you know, for, my first full-time year was 2008. I, I saw some highs in the early going and then um, some relative lows and then kind of come back through. And just the, the stability, the trust that, that's in place that, that we have, you know, sports are such a cutthroat industry and, um, you know, Stu doesn't really, he doesn't ride the peaks and the valleys. He's pretty stable. And, and the trust that he has in us, the, the confidence he has in us to just do what we think is best without fear of the, the outcome on any individual case um, really does open us up to, I think, a lot of the success that, that we have. And, and he deserves a lot of credit for giving us the room and the patience to, um, to follow through on the things that we think are best and not become overly concerned about any singular outcome. Obviously, at some point, we need to win some games, too. But. Eric, a lot of your guys. But a guy like Kevin Kiermaier, who's been here for the downs as well, can you describe what he means to this organization and just on a personal level for you, the feeling to see him get to the World Series? Yeah, I, I mean, you, uh, he's a third third day draft pick, you know, a 30 something round pick that, um, you know, had to earn every opportunity he had to um, to continue to play the game and to climb and to have the chance to play in the big leagues. And the energy and the enthusiasm and the passion that he has to do it um, combined with just being an incredible teammate, you know, and incredibly supportive of the group that's around him and the energy he brings. I mean, just the, the consummate professional, the consummate Ray, you know, he's, he's everything that, that we want to have in a player and um, we're honored to, to have him. And, you know, like I said earlier, one of many, many players that uh, just, uh, over the moon for the opportunity they have to showcase themselves on this stage. And on the flip side of KK, there's Randy, who's been here for 30 seconds. How do you describe the ride that he's taking you guys on? There's going to be a time to try to describe it. Right now, we just it's uh, it's been game after game after game, and for Randy, hit after hit after homer after hit, and just unbelievable. Um, uh, it was. It, it, I, don't, I don't know. My vocabulary is not good enough to, to put that into the appropriate context and um, to describe it properly uh, after just the night of getting past last night here. So um, I don't know. There'll be a time to reflect and really, truly appreciate it. But my goodness, what a what a run he's been on. And um, I don't really see any signs of it slowing down right now. And that's a, a wonderful thing. Hey Eric, uh, your uh, your defense has been such a decisive part of the postseason so far, and I was wondering if you could just explain a little bit about how that's prioritized, sort of throughout the organization, and then just who you credit for giving you guys that edge. Yeah. Hey Hannah. Um, it, hey. The yeah, I, you know, it's back to what John said. I mean, we just 
we try to gather players that we think are winning players in the way that we assess them. And there's times where they, they present in uh, packages and profiles that might not be as obvious. Um, and, and, and defense is something that we've just never taken for granted. And, and we've just found, we found our way to more players that, um, you know, have defensive abilities and attributes and can do the finer, you know, the finer things within a baseball game um, to win games. And, you know, that's the, we, we've been able to access a lot of players like that. And once you have players like that, it makes it that much easier to appreciate them. And, um, you know, you saw it back in, was it game two, if I'm not mistaken, just an unbelievable defensive display. Um, and when you see it come together like that, it's, it's a heck of a lot of fun, but uh, yeah. And, 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 you know, it's, there's a lot of pride in it. You see the work that happens pregame um, and, and the drill work that's done. It's not a matter of going through the motions with our prep. Um, we do a lot of things at game speed. Our coaching staff deserves a lot of credit, our player development staff for the drill work that they do and how that's evolved. Um, and it's, you, you, you can talk about defense, but it's really about getting reps and it's really about prioritizing it and all you do. And uh, we've got a culture of that top to bottom here. You guys sort of managed to have both really versatile players, but then also it seems like no one is ever playing out of position. Just like, I don't know, who who in your front office or coaching staff is responsible for making sure those alignments always work? Oh, man, that's the, a lot. It depends where in a player's career and progression and what's going on. Um, you know, our, our major league group uh, does a wonderful job of making sure that our players are exposed to all the things that they might see in a game. You know, all our pregame work where they take reps. Um, they, they do a wonderful job of keeping players um, prepared for those moments, you know, staying ahead of those moments. But, you know, through our minor league system, we're always looking for ways to get guys opportunities at different spots on the field. And they tell you a lot, you know, <laughs> we don't, not everyone bounces around, um, but we have right now, we're fortunate to have a lot of athletic players that are just good baseball players, strong hand eye ability, um, just, you know, just solid baseball skill sets that make it a lot easier to place them anywhere on the field. And they just respond really well to the game once they have some reps under them, seeing balls from, you know, the angles that they might get that night. Thanks, Eric. Hey, Eric. Um, how's it going? Um, in, uh, like in this era of baseball, when so many pitchers throw so hard, what do you still see as the advantage to having as many pitchers as you do that could run it up to, you know, 98 to 100? That's uh, the... As, as much as velocity is at its peak, um, as, as much as pitch usage is as confusing as ever um, in terms of what to lean on, the uh, game still comes down to throwing strikes. And um, I think that's something that, you know, we have a lot of different looks, a lot of different styles, but by and large, the guys that, that we have, they're, they're in the position they're in because of their ability to throw a strike with a few different pitches. Um, you know, that's, that's really it in its simplest form. Um, certainly to have guys like Pete that can, you know, get a chase out of the zone on a hundred, like he did last night in the eighth, that, uh, that, that certainly helps. But um, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. It really, I mean, we, we don't, we don't uh, get too far away from the message of throwing strikes and, and, and keeping it there. But um yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to hit our group right now. And frankly, just going through these postseason series, I I can't imagine ever being harder to hit than it is right now with, with what these guys are seeing. And a completely unrelated note. I'm sorry if you've addressed this in the past, but could you just sort of walk us through sort of the trade that landed you a Rosarena and sort of how that came together and what sort of your thoughts were about him when you acquired him when you did? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do my my best off uh, off memory here. Randy was a a player that we kept tabs on for a few years and, and came up in a, in a variety of, of, of conversations with, with St. Louis and, and someone that uh, athletically very visible, um, how gifted he was athletically, um, but the ability to apply it um, to baseball um, and, and just kind of the baseball skill of his game was something that we kept tabs on, you know, to see if that would continue to grow and, and develop as, as he progressed through his career. And, um, you know, for us, uh, really, uh, I mean, uh, our our scouts um, spent a lot of time tracking him and following him over the last two, three years. Um, you know, our research and development group tracking and following him through their lens um, was, you know, a player that that we had a lot of attention on there. And uh, really, just through 2019, a player that we saw continue to make improvements in the box, continue to demonstrate an ability to 
make more contact and um, showed some signs of impacting the ball um, uh, better than he had than he had previously. Um, and yeah, and I think nothing more than a you know just a, a shot on a player. St. Louis had a lot of right-handed hitting outfielders at the time. It wasn't even as much as. Um, I think we were singularly focused on him. It was a matter of that was a skill set we were looking for. And they had, um, you know, they had a surplus of guys and that's where we were able to overlap. But, um, you know, I really just a long history following a very athletic player that we saw some signs that they were putting together on the field. And um, thankfully, the best was yet to come. And there's there's no way that, that we saw anything coming like what he's done here this postseason. No way. But we're, we're glad we have him. And uh, we're, we're really fortunate that, that he's gone on this tear. Thanks. Hey, Eric. And, Travis, a good player too, by the way, just to, just to note it. <laughs> hey, Eric. Travis Wells here from uh, WDBJ in Roanoke, Virginia. Um, there's a lot of Hokies here. They're obviously Rays fans right now. Can you just speak to the culture of this team from the top all the way down to the clubhouse and how you've kind of gone about building that culture? Yeah. Um, just – Selfless. I mean, look, we, we got a lot of people that all feel really fortunate to have a living that are that just revolves around a game. You know, <laughs> I don't think I don't think that's lost any on, on any of us. Um, you know, we see that as as a privilege, you know, that that's that's our line of work. And, and we take it really seriously um, because of that. But at the same time, we have a lot of fun, you know, and and we take advantage of all the reasons that working in a game is just a blast. Um, but just, uh, just a wonderful group of people, you know, that just all love what they do. And, um, you know, we're joined by the subject matter of baseball, but I think really became united just for our passion and respect for one another. And um, I, I just, I, I don't know, it, it didn't happen overnight. I think just, just a lot of wonderful people that, um, you know, or about the team as, as much as one could imagine and truly, truly enjoy each other and um, are just totally united for, for a common goal of trying to win a World Series. And if we fall short, making sure we have a lot of fun along the way too. Can you put your journey in some kind of perspective from starting as an intern with the organization and working your way up and now playing such a prominent role and getting the team back to a World Series? Yeah, um, <laughs> Not really. <laughs> the I, I was I was very fortunate to you know to to be given to have an internship with this club in 2007. And I don't I don't know. I didn't I didn't I wasn't owed anything. I didn't deserve anything. Just was in the right place at the at the right time to get that opportunity. Um, and with an organization at the time was at its infancy stages in terms of what they were building with new ownership and a new baseball ops group and, um, you know, uh, they continued to provide me opportunity and um, thankfully was able to do enough with it for them to provide me more. But I, I just, um, you know, from Stu on down, I, I can't speak highly enough about how well this organization has treated me um, through, through my time here and not just me, but, but everybody here. Um, I, I couldn't imagine um, a a place, a workplace, not just in sports, but anywhere, um, treating people as well as, as we're treated here, um, you know, throughout this. And yeah, like I said, just, just thankful for all the opportunities that certainly I've been provided and a lot of us have been provided here and trying to do our best to, to take it all in and enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, Eric, to, to take you back to Randy for a second, do, were you guys watching him when he was in the Mexican league or did you latch onto him when he got to the Cardinals? Uh, no, primarily Cardinals. Uh, we, we did have through some winter ball. We did, we did spend some time keeping tabs on them, but, um, really it was, I'm trying to go back and details a little fuzzy at the moment. I apologize, but I, I want to say acquired in the AD, like 16 is probably 16 to 17, probably when we started to kind of loosely keep tabs on almost entirely with the Cardinals after he was signed and they signed and brought him in. And then what's the most impressive thing you've ever seen him do? Dance. <laughs> oh, man. No, I, uh, he's a pretty good dancer. Um, I was a little uncomfortable watching him spin on his head uh, after game five. But, yeah, you probably didn't love that. Yeah, uh, I'm glad he was okay. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's probably not any 
singular moment as much as just the repeat, you know, this, this repeated nature of what he's doing, you know, I, it's every additional home or every additional big hit. I mean, the, the, that home run he hit in the first inning yesterday was, was such a lift to our club. You know, our offense is, um, everybody's seen it. They've, they've been grinding this entire series and, and, and really back to the middle of that Yankees series. We haven't been able to get a whole lot going. We've hit some balls out of the park, but, um, you know, to, to set the tone and to hit a ball like that out the other way um, and to do it on a fastball after he hasn't seen many fastballs. Um, that was, that was huge for our group and got the Knicks hail. And, um, you know, it was early in the game. It wasn't a game winning game ending Homer by any means, but, but that one certainly set the tone. And I think is a big reason why we're, we're still playing right now. Thanks. Eric, it feels like whenever your team is written about or covered, it's through this lens of they're outsmarting people. It's analytics. You even said it earlier, we're not outsmarting people necessarily. I've heard Kevin Cash say that more than once. So what are folks missing then if, you know what I mean? Because it just seems to me like it's clearly more than just these are analytics guys. What are folks missing about your team? Yeah. Um, no, I think Virginia Tech and Florida State are outsmarting people um with all due respect to our schools uh I'm a, I'm a very proud Hokie and I know Cash is a very proud Seminole um I we have we have a lot of people that that work here and are really passionate about what they what they do I I think you know, we spend a lot of time trying to make sure we talk about activating our workforce making sure that the people that we have working here um develop enough comfort and, and, and a feeling of security that they'll speak up, that they'll share their thoughts, um, that they'll be willing to put themselves out there without fear of the consequences of being wrong or being off the mark. I mean, and I think from a cultural standpoint, getting to a place, especially in sports where it's so cutthroat, there's so much turnover that only lends itself to people not speaking up. And sometimes they feel the best way to advance is to say nothing. And, um, I spend a lot of time, uh, our leadership spends a lot of time trying to, you know, to, to knock those concerns down. And, and really at the end of the day, um, so much of my job, I believe, is um, to make sure that everyone feels comfortable sharing what they think and no thoughts go left being unsaid. Um, because if they're not being shared, then we're, we're not going to advance as, as fast as we need to. And, you know, when, when you have a few hundred people that'll, I'll put themselves out there and not be afraid to say the wrong thing. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing the kind of ideas and, and you know, the, just the, the thoughts and, and things that, uh, that we can accomplish. I mean, every business book, book on earth is going to write that same thing you just said. And the difference obviously is execution, right? So what is it about that place that, well, because there's two things that stand out and you, you touched on it. People have come through there and left, and yet you guys keep winning, right? Um, and you're clearly getting this feedback that you want. So what, in your mind, has been the key to the execution to this thing that everyone wants to do, but not many people seem to be able to execute? Yeah, I, well, it, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, we screw up a lot, <laughs> and um, but we adjust. We're, we're okay making mistakes. I think you go back to the stew part of it. I mean, he, he'll, he'll use the, you know, break a window, don't burn down the house. You know, that's kind of one of his things. And, and, and there is, there, there is support. I, I don't, I don't know if that's the, the best way to describe it, but there's support to take chances and to make mistakes. And the, it, it's incredibly empowering to have a culture where, you know, people are comfortable making mistakes and, and appreciating what can be gained by, you know, learning um, and uh, really just focusing on trying new things, trying on what we think is best and, and, and putting ourselves out there. The try is the most important part, whether it's successful, whether it's failed, there's so much to be gained either way, just by the attempt to do whatever it is that you think we need to do. Um, and, and when it comes to, to people moving on, I, I don't, I mean, I, when, I think you have a group of staff that are as activated and as, um, uh, you know, um, and they're contributing as much as each individual is in our organization. It's not, 
it's, it doesn't become about one person or five people or 10 people. It really becomes about that mindset, you know, that I just talked about um, that, that I think really is as much uh, our success as, as anything. Um, and, and really, like I said, I think those of us that are in leadership positions here just try to foster that and to keep it going because, you know, for different reasons, you know, we'll get fired, we'll move on, things will happen. And you just want to make sure that you're, you're growing and cultivating um, people to step up into greater roles and to keep that culture moving forward. And um, we've been fortunate enough to do that to this point. Thanks, Eric. Eric, I think a lot of fans around the country, uh, they obviously they want their team to win the World Series, but they've come to associate innovation with cost efficiency for whatever reason. How important it is to the game, do you think, for the success of the Rays that teams can now say, no, no, we're not just going to get a little bit better. This is something that's actually going to get us to the World Series. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, there, there, it's hard. It's, it's hard to, to reach this point. It's hard to, to have success. I, I think we are, I mean, almost entirely focused on just doing what we think is best for us and, and for our organization and, um, you know, be it payroll, you know, be it revenue disparities, any of that stuff. I, I just, I, we don't really spend a whole lot of time on it because it doesn't change anything. Um, but, you know, in terms of really, truly, we, we just go about our business the way that we think is best for us. And, and, and based on the work that, that we do and, and based on the players we have and, and that's it. And I, I don't think we, we, we don't worry a whole lot about how it's received. We don't worry a whole lot about, um, you know, what, what other teams are doing or how they're going about their goals. Um, we keep the focus on us and I don't know, we probably, we'd get better answers to that from, from people outside our organization at this point, because. Yeah. Do you think it's important for the game? I and mean, there's a guy in Oakland who's done a tremendous job and all he hears is you never got to the world series. Is it yeah. for the game to see that you can get to the world series without running a $200 million payroll? Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know, I guess. I mean, I guess it's, it's nice to see success happen in different ways. Look, this is, I, I, I think, you, you want to see teams find success in, in different ways. That's part of what makes the game what it is. I, I don't think you ever want to see there being one particular cookie cutter form of success in anything. That's not, that's not what makes it fun. You know, I don't, um, I'm really happy for our group that we have the opportunity to, you know, to be on this stage, like I've said, and you know, our, our brand of baseball is, not the same as the Astros or the Yankees, you know, uh, as two examples of teams we played, but, but that's okay. I think, you know, th to show that there are different ways to, to do this. Sure. I, I think that's great for baseball, but um, by no means is this the only way, whatever, whatever this way is um, we're just a good team right now. Thank you. We'll take, we'll take Eric, one. Eric, can I ask you real quick, Eric, um, yesterday when Charlie Morton was done, when, when Kevin went out to get him, one of the things he said after the game was, this was the plan, basically, I'm paraphrasing, but this was the plan to get him out before the third time through. How much does Kevin have autonomy to make whatever call he wants? And how much of it is, I don't want to say scripted, but talked over and said, look, if we get here, this is what we want to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kevin's the one in the dugout in a situation where he has to look that group in the eye and, and dealing like using this specific example, he, he's the one that has to look him in the eye. He's the one that's down there in a game seven, having to make that call. And that has to be entirely his decision to make that call. Um, you, I, I, be it any decision that's made on the field and, and, and through the course of a the game, there's a lot of stuff we kick around because we love to, we love to kick it around, but he, he has to make the call he believes is best. And because he's the one that is directly accountable to, to that group. Um, and that's something that be it in that decision with Charlie, be it in the decision, um, you know, with a lineup, whatever it may be, that's, that's entirely on him. Um, 100%. So there are things, you know, you, you, you run through scenarios, the staff run through scenarios and, you know, you try to prepare as best you can for, for the things that come up, but um, no, you, he needs to have the autonomy to make those decisions as he sees fit because um, at the end of the day, he's the one that answers most directly to our players in those moments. Um, does he, does he make lineups? 
Yeah. Were we asking that question in 2020? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, hey, not every club does. Well, let's 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 clear it up since since we're here. Yes, he does. Yeah. And and for those of us that have those on this that have followed our team uh, at various points, I think that's probably been made clear time. So, yes. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thank that's you. all the time that we have for today with Eric. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks for your time. And Eric, thank you for your time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys.